Top United States University campuses, including those of Yale, New York University, and Columbia University, find themselves on edge amid arrests of pro-Palestinian demonstrators and mounting tension between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israel protesters over the war in Gaza. On Monday, these tensions spilled over into Midtown Manhattan, where the NYU campus is located, and onto the Yale campus in New Haven, Connecticut. So what happened? At Yale, 60 people, mostly student protesters, were arrested for blocking traffic while NYU witnessed similar arrests as police dismantle an encampment. Earlier in April, over 100 pro-Palestinian protesters from Colombia were arrested for trespassing, resulting in suspensions, including that of Isra Hirsi, daughter of U.S. Representative Ilhan Umar. I was suspended Thursday morning at 10 a.m. with two other fellow Barnard students. Um, the email stated that we had engaged in disruptive behavior but had not outlined the code of conduct that we had violated. Um, the three of us were the only three that had done public interviews at that point, and so we think that our targeting or our the reason we got suspended so early was due to the fact that we had made ourselves known, um, and then that the school got NYPD records um, to be able to arrest the rest of the students. But why exactly are the students protesting? Well, the protests are driven by demands for divestment from corporations profiting from Gaza's conflict. The NYU Palestine Solidarity Coalition, Columbia University Apartheid Divest, Students for Justice in Palestine, and Jewish Voice for Peace are among the leading voices calling for divestment and a Gaza ceasefire. At Yale, protesters demanded divestment from military weapons manufacturers, Similarly, protests have emerged at other universities, including UC Berkeley, MIT, University of Michigan, Emerson College, and Tufts. In essence, students are demanding divestment from companies supporting Israel's actions in Gaza and financial transparency regarding investments and academic collaborations with Israeli institutions. But critics of the protests have raised accusations of anti-Semitism and harassment towards Jewish students at the universities. Social media footage showed pro-Palestinian activists apparently telling pro-Israel students to go back to Poland outside Columbia University campus. However, Columbia University apartheid divest distanced itself from what it described as media distractions, focusing on inflammatory individuals who do not represent us. And lastly, let's address the buzz around Columbia University's president and her recent appearance before Congress. Columbia University President Nima Chafi faced scrutiny before a U.S. Congressional Committee about alleged anti-Semitism at the university, which both pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian groups criticized. Pro-Israel students and faculty feel the administration hasn't ensured their safety and have called for Ms. Shafiq's resignation, while pro-Palestinian protesters accuse Columbia of suppressing their freedom of expression. Have you seen anti-Muslim protests on campus? I have seen, we have, we have had pro-Israeli demonstrations on campus? No, 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 uh, but, but, but just not, a protest that was not, against Muslims. No, I have not. Have you not seen, seen one against Arabs? No, I have not. Have you seen one against uh, Palestinians? No, I have not. Have you seen against one against Jewish people? Have you seen a protest no. saying we are against Jewish people? No, I have, I have seen. Okay, thank, no, thank I, you for that clarification. When mobs or people are shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free, or long live the infatata, are those anti-Semitic statements? Yes or no? It's not how you feel, it's... I hear them as such, some people don't. We have sent so a clear yes? message. So is that yes? We have sent a clear message to our community. I'm not asking about the message. Is that fall under definition of anti-Semitic behavior yes or no why is it so tough because it's a it's a it's a difficult issue because it, it, i some realize people it's a difficult it issue but here's Other the problem not. is and when people can't answer a simple question and they have a definition but then they can't well i'm not really sure if that qualifies so i'm asking a simple question maybe i should ask your task force does that qualify as anti-semitic behavior those statements yes or no Yes, okay. Do you agree with your task force? Yeah, we, we agree. So, the question uh, is yes. what? So the question, so yes, you it. do agree that those are, that is anti-Semitic behavior and you should be, there should be some consequences to that anti-Semitic behavior. We're in agreement, yes? Yes. Thank you, I yield my time. <laughs> I hemmed and hawed and then eventually said, I hear them as such, some people don't. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about there? Who are these people that you're referring to? 
Well, I think even surveys uh, by the Anti-Defamation League and others have shown that even that some Jewish people don't hear that as anti-Semitic, whereas I would say the majority do. Uh, so it's one of those phrases that is heard differently. By so that's many. who you're referring to is, is, is Jewish population, some sector of it? Yeah, some, yes, and I have received uh, letters from our Jewish faculty who say that they also don't think it should it, it is anti-Semitic. But I think you're, Congressman, I think you put your finger on a, on, a, on a challenging issue. We have sent a message to our community. All of the deans of Columbia University, all 17 of them for the first time, wrote a letter to the community saying, these words are hurtful and are hurtful. Okay, that, that's good. Way. And I'm glad that Professor Scheitzer was able to give us a very clear answer, yes, but you weren't able to do so. And I think if I were to go through a number of other uh, racial slurs and ask you if those are offensive, if these are racist, I don't think you'd say, I hear them as such. Some people don't, would you? I think, I believe, I, I, I'm happy to give you my personal opinion, but I think the question that you're really asking me is, are they forbidden to be said at Columbia? Uh, uh, that's that, not what I'm asking, okay. actually. Right. I'm, well, then I'm happy I think to we you... saw your instinct is that okay. you're, I, I'm wondering, who are you risking, who are you worried about offending? That's my no, question. No, no, no. I, I feel like I'm speaking as president of Columbia, so that's the way in which I'm Okay, let's talk about questions. Columbia. Um, are there anti-Semitic professors on your faculty? I certainly hope not, and I, uh, if I have any evidence that they, there are, uh, there you will be consequences. You don't think there's evidence of anti-Semitism among professors on your faculty? We have seen some cases and there have been consequences. The situation at Columbia escalated with the suspension of Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voice for Peace, leading to plans by the New York Civil Liberties Union to sue the university. Protests continued at Columbia on Monday with demand for Ms. Shafiq's resignation mounting from both sides. And that's all for now. For more on this, subscribe to Dawn News English.